Man after man, will your descendants be pulsating swollen tumors who fashionably accessorize with new organs and severed limbs, or will they be large, ever-expanding, morbidly obese biological meat factories? Are humans still humans without their humanity? What does that even mean? And do I have to put my body in the aluminum foil box to get free blood opium? All this and more on In The Man. This all started slightly in the future on a dying Earth. Some of the humans of the future wanted to leave and find new worlds to colonize, but the problem was they needed a labor force to gather materials. Casting ethics and morals to the side, these humans began to engineer new species of people for life in different environments. These people existed for the sole purpose of constructing a generation ship that they never got to go on. Without further ado, let's take a look at the new species whose entire existence was getting the short end of the stick. These are the vacuum orbs. Avocado-looking space turtles created from former humans to work in the zero-gravity vacuum of space. Genetic engineering, selective breeding, surgery, and other methods of haphazardly playing God went into the creation of this being. They had pressurized bodies to keep the vacuum from forcefully suctioning out all of their organs. This green meatball has a tough layer of outer skin, thick eyelids to prevent them from going blind due to solar radiation, and extra lungs it refills by going to the edge of the atmosphere. It also has a waste gas lung that it can use to propel itself through space. They can't talk seeing as how they're in a vacuum, so they communicate through uncanny valley Eskimo kisses with these whisker-like structures on their face. Because of the way their bodies are structured, they could never exist on the surface of Earth, as gravity would crush them like the balls of a guy who paid $500 to get them stomped on. Meet the aquamorphs. Mm. Frogfish people genetically engineered from regular humans that live in the waters of the world. They have flat, wide faces and large mouths. Despite their slim torsos, they have chins all the way down their torso like honey boo Boo's mom. They also have this neat little Wombology Mermaid Man tool belt. They were created to scour the waterways for useful building materials and contribute to the generation ship's progress. These two groups of unconsenting victims of eugenics worked hard to create the spaceships for their unfeeling, unmodified creators, who then took the ship and left without saying thank you. Flash forward 100 years, and many of the vanilla humans that didn't get on the ship now take on the form of extremely inbred, constantly drugged up vegetables in big metal boxes. These of the high tech. All this tech and they still couldn't come up with a better name. Either many or all of their organs failed and to avoid the fear of non-existence, they kept themselves alive with complex machines. Understandably, when your organs can go obsolete like an iPhone, it's quite a stressful situation. But that's no problem if your aluminum foil sausage casing can can put lots of Xanax in your blood. The only time they slide out of their ketamine refrigerator is when they want to clap cheeks. They both strap into the swings and slap their flabby meat piles together like a fleshy Newton's cradle. Because they for some reason have to be detached from their most vital organs for it, this is often fatal and rarely fruitful. These conscious toasters genetically engineered a ton of different dumber feral humans to replenish the holes in the ecosystem that humanity left by killing everything. These creatures eventually adapt and evolve to fill a wide variety of niches in the ecosystem, and they'll likely have a video all of themselves. Meanwhile, in the ocean, the aquamorphs got apple updates from genetic engineers in the form of the aquamorphs. They would now have the grace of a beached whale on land. The sea is their home. They slowly evolved to begin to resemble uncanny valley seals, still with fully articulated human fingers for use in tickling me in my nightmares. The aquatics overpopulated the ocean and because of this had a food crisis. They adapted and gained the ability to produce a gel substance to take water with them, allowing them to traverse on land and find more food. I bet it had a consistency somewhere between snail slime and snot. So just remember, if your skin is constantly moist to the touch and resembles a slime of sorts, in aquatic culture, you would be considered advanced. While we were looking at the creepy water people, the high-tech replaced their machine organs with lab-grown synthetic organs, calling themselves the Tick. They came to resemble swollen flesh tumors with limbs sticking out haphazardly in every direction. In the Tick society, you used the amount of limbs you had to accessorize. Not only that, but you could solve all of your medical problems just by slapping on new body parts. Alcoholism killed your liver, get a new one and keep on chugging. Lung cancer? I got good news. Break out the cigars. You want a tail? I don't get it, but I'll still take your money. No matter how many organs they replaced, they couldn't avoid the disaster of Earth's magnetic poles switching, which for some reason the actual science doesn't think is legit, caused a whole bunch of natural disasters that bodied the ticks into non-existence. For a while, the many different species of wild human that the high-tech created were allowed to exist and evolve in the natural state of the world. That was until 
until those vanilla humans that left five million years ago came back home looking notably less vanilla. This living leather gimp suit is known as a builder, and they're soon to be the only descendant of humans that isn't completely Cronenberg. For example, these are their mounts. When creating the mounts, the builders were basically like, Hey, getting around is kind of hard. We should get something like a car, or, or a plane, or a spaceship. Oh, you mean genetically engineer our friend to make him shaped kind of like a motorcycle, and then we can hook tubes into his head to control his brain, and ride around on his back like some sort of flying man horse? I meant more like a vehicle. Well, sorry, Nutton, you should have been more clear. So basically, they're flying around on their former species, members and turning the remaining humans on Earth into niche goal abominations. This is the Air Changer. They're basically living air conditioners controlled by mechanical brains and are constantly altering the atmosphere to be more suitable for the new GIMP people. We're just air conditioners. I mean, after all, we're just walking around on the planet, breathing, conditioning the air. Alongside these monstrosities, the genetically engineered human food creatures. Basically, they made a big blob to make as much meat as possible and harvested it while the creature was still alive. You know a buffet carving section where they have a cut of meat and the guy is slicing off pieces for everyone? So it's like that, except a living, forever regenerating, morbidly obese man. If you like this video and you want to see more content, more man after man content, you should subscribe with all notifications enabled, like, and comment. Please do whatever you can to keep boosting my robot good boy points. Also, do you guys want to see a sequel for this? Maybe one where I talk about the human fauna. If you do, show a lot of support to this video and share it around, because if the video is successful, that's how I know that people want more. As always, I want to thank my most devoted cult members for showing up to like and watch every video. I really appreciate it. We recently hit 20,000, and that's awesome. I love every single one of you like you are my own spawn. I want to thank everybody who's been sending in more fan art recently. I'm sorry I haven't been getting to it because my other project that I couldn't discuss for legal reasons was kicking my butt, but now it's it's done and I can do more things again. So please, if you have fan art, send it to this email address because a million people are sending me a million DMs on a million different services and I don't understand. As always, like seven at the bell and I will see you all in hell. Okay, bye.